Hello and welcome to this next flip preaching video. My name's Andy. I'm filming this from home because we're in lockdown here on the Isle of Man at the moment. Um, I pray that you're well and safe. I hope that you're well and safe where, wherever you are. So this is a flip preaching video. So we look at the passage to come for the, for the Sunday to come and unpick it before we get there. So today's passage, reverting back to John, is John 1, 43 to 51. It's the story of the calling of... Uh, Philip and Nathaniel. Now we know that Philip is a disciple. He's mentioned in the list. We don't quite know about Nathaniel. It's a bit of a mystery. The way that it's presented here implies that he is one of the core 12 disciples, but he doesn't appear on the other lists. Possibly we think that he might be Bartholomew. He might have had sort of two names, but we don't really know much about him. Um, but the, the figure of Nathaniel is quite mysterious in many ways because um, he's set up in this passage to be a bit like Jacob, or who was renamed Israel in the Old Testament. Certainly there are lots of connections between the two. So let's have a look. Um, so the story is Jesus calls Philip to follow him and then they go to Galilee, um, this northern part of Israel, um, this kind of you know, in the sticks. And Philip was from that area, so perhaps Jesus wanted Philip to be a kind of guide. And it appears that Philip knows Nathaniel. And uh, so Philip, Philip goes to Nathaniel and tells him all about Jesus, saying, we've found the one who Moses in the law and the prophets were writing about. He gives them the, a huge introduction. Um, Nathaniel's a bit sniffy about the fact he comes from Nazareth. We don't really know what's going on there. Maybe Nazareth, um, Nathaniel was from Cana, and maybe there was a kind of local rivalry between the two places. They're both quite small places. And Philip says, come and see, which is a phrase that has been used earlier in John's Gospel. Come and see. And Nathaniel does. He doesn't say, no, not, you know, not for me, thank you. He does. He's willing to, to give it a go. And then Jesus um, sees Nathanael coming towards him and he says one of these really important phrases, here is truly an Israelite. What does that mean? In whom there is no deceit, in whom there's no guile. Um, Jesus says that this man, Nathanael, is a true Israelite and in him there's no deceit or guile. And that's the first reference back to the character of Jacob. Jacob was later renamed Israel. It's all named after him. So the, the, there's the connection with the word Israel, but also the thing about deceit. Um, Jacob was a deceptive person right from the start. In Genesis 27, uh, we get the story of how Jacob, who was the, the second born son, um, manages to trick his father into giving him the birthright instead of Esau, the rightful one. And the word um, deceit is used there as well. The same word in the Greek version of the Old Testament. So it is kind of setting up um, Nathaniel to be like like Jacob, but better without the, without the deceit. And then at the end of the passage, we get this strange thing where Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending, which is a direct quote from um, Genesis 28. A bit late, later in the Jacob story, um, he flees from Esau and then one night he sets down in the middle of nowhere in the, you know, a, it says he came to a certain place. This is like anywhere. And he sits down for the night and he has a dream of angels of God ascending and descending a ladder. Again, word for word quote. We're meant to think back to the Jacob story here. But Jesus says something rather unusual and interesting. He says, you will see heaven opened and the angels of, oh, by the way, same as last week, the heavens being opened. You don't get that in John apart from this bit. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus is saying that I'm Jacob's ladder. I'm Jacob's ladder. I'm the connection between earth and heaven. I'm the one who kind of links the two together. Jesus is Jacob's ladder. 
interesting way to think about Jesus, the bridge between earth and heaven. Jesus is heaven come to earth to live here. He's like the ladder that brings the two together. In the, in the Genesis 28 story, back to the original one, Jacob calls the place where he had that dream Bethel, which means the house of God. So Jesus is kind of saying, I'm the new house of God. The house of God is no longer in a place, in a temple. It's me and I'm everywhere. It's Jesus is the new Bethel, the new place where God is found. God is not found in buildings. God is found in the person of Jesus who is with us in spirit. The other thing running through this passage is the motive of the fig tree, because Nathaniel was sitting under a fig tree and Jesus knows that he's under a fig tree before he sees him. That's part of the reason why Nathaniel's first drawn to him, thinks that something special is going on. A fig tree um, in, was used in the Old Testament in the later minor prophets to be a sign of the eternal kingdom to come. So in the passage uh, from Micah, Micah 4, um, we've got the the more well-known bit of this, they shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. There's a clue there. If you're into weapons, that's not the way God wants it to be. God is against weapons. God will, God's saying that one day, one day, all the weapons will be turned into uh, farming tools that will produce good things for people. But then it goes on. They shall sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees. There's a sense that people will have their own property and will be peaceful. And the similar in Zechariah, Zechariah 3. On that day, says the Lord of hosts, this is the final day when everything is made right, when God's restored everything. You shall invite each other to come under your vine and fig tree. There's a sense that being hospitable and being, you know, enjoying each other's company is part of the, the life to come. And Nathaniel was sat under a fig tree. He's kind of a a symbol, if you like, of the redeemed person, the, the person who's followed Jesus and has seen um, has seen the light, because there's no there's no deceit in him. He's 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 honest, he's truthful, he's straightforward, sitting under his fig tree. So so some questions to think about. What do you make about that connection between Nathaniel and Jacob, renamed Israel? Two, what does it mean that Jesus is saying he's like Jacob's ladder? Three, what does it mean for Jesus to be Bethel? And four, how is this good news today? Okay, I hope that you're well. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.